like I just put my underwear on and somebody was like, hey, are you Northern Lion? Now get in the garbage disposal, I'll hit the button. Like I'm not saying AI has no purpose, I'm just saying that's the dumbest purpose of all time. By the way, it's crazy to me people keep calling this a children's game. Just because children like enjoy- By the way, don't even get me started. You motherfuckers will be like, I can't believe he's playing a children's game. I can't believe you motherfuckers all went to the movie theater and made the Super Mario Brothers movie open to $350 million. You're taking seats away from little eight-year-old kids' birthday parties and stuff like that. Then you're gonna say- oh, Wait, is it paused? Because we are getting a phone call here. Your ass is gonna tell- I'm- I paid money to play a kid's game on my own time. I'm not taking anybody else's lunch in the interim period. Okay, put this. Can I have a phone call, please? Please? I'm just saying, you got to apply the same level of criticism to yourself that you apply to me. But I already know that there's no shot that that's happening. I, the only thing that makes this a kid's game is the aesthetics. If you made the art shittier and called it Fire Emblem Milkshake Heroes, people would be like, it's not a kid's game. It's a game for general audiences. But because it's like, looks like a Flash game, people are like, it's for kids. You don't even see, you don't even know what you're talking about. Odyssey has been saved, and I'm gonna load my previous save. This is called Save Scumming. It's a hot topic right now, as a result of um, Baldur's Gate 3's prodigious release. What are my thoughts on Save Scumming? My thoughts on Save Scumming is, brother, you're 37 years old. You shouldn't be getting into arguments online about how you play with digital toys. You're really gonna get in an argument with somebody about, oh, your, your Baldur's Gate playthrough is like less valid than mine because I never reloaded. I'm playing on Iron Man, you're not playing on Iron Man, who cares? Like, it's a toy, it's a toy. I don't mean that in a derogatory fashion, I'm, I'm just saying like, life's too short, man. BRB, making my McDonald's Sprite gimmick account right now. Okay, but none of you fuckers who make these accounts better like become white supremacists or anything like that. It's gonna reflect really badly on me. They started as a Northern Lion fan-edited YouTube channel and now they're doing interviews uh, on like banned websites. Do not do this, okay? I mean, for the obvious reason, but also for the less obvious reason that it would reflect poorly on me. Do not become. Stop asking me about where Squeaks was on January 6th. I told you, he was in Washington, D.C. It was me, Squeaks, and Ariel Pink in a hotel room, okay? But we weren't at the riots, okay? We were just there to sample some of the culture, and then things got, like, really, like, scary. So we just went back to the hotel room. Toy Story gives me the ick. Honestly, no disrespect to women. You're all, you're all queens, as far as I'm concerned. Except... Um, Mussolini's granddaughter. I'm trying, there's probably a couple more. Marie Le Pen. I don't know. <laughs> Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> Ava Braun. Yeah, okay. Um, Margaret Thatcher, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm done trying to avoid the ick. I'm 34 years old. I, at this point in my life, I am what I am. I'm not gonna spend the next potentially 50 years of my life and, and marriage trying to avoid the ick. That'll just die and be like, well, mission accomplished. Like what it, if you're gonna get the ick, that's fine. We're not compatible then. I mean, with my wife, if she didn't get the ick from me walking on my toes, like she's unickable at this point, I hope. I'm trying pretty hard crying every time Toy Story 2 comes on though. Bob Iger would throw your ass in a garbage disposal if it brought the Disney stock price up a quarter point. And you know what? He would be right to do it because that's the obligation the CEO has to the shareholders in his messed up system, okay? But he would do it in a heartbeat. He would say, thank you so much for treating Disneyland, our profit-generating theme park enterprise, with the reverence it deserves. Now get in the garbage disposal, I'll hit the button. Listen, it's like, if you're from California and you assault, insult American states, you don't insult Texas. Because you're like, Texas, you know, they got their own thing going on. You insult Arkansas, which is next to Texas, but worse in every single way. I'm sorry. 
And if you're from Texas, you insult California because you're jealous. It's just, I, I know the way that this works within the same country, you know, there's a, it's like a sibling rivalry type thing. Congratulations on the birth of your child, by the way. That's Schmidt Davidson, the snake. That's Miley Cyrus and Lana Del Rey. I'm actually going for bonus points. Come on, this is Canadian legend Celine Dion. I don't miss twice. And that's Jimmy Kimmel. That's 100% right there. It's actually like 110% because I believe I named all of the multiple people in the photo as well. You didn't name Bill Clinton? I said I named all the people in the photos, okay? Do your own research. No, I'm not going to start my daughter on one piece so that she has a chance to finish it. Like, that's just... Most people, I have to imagine, discover anime um, because their parents got them, like, a computer when they were in middle school, but then they were, like, a little too busy to constantly supervise them. And that's how they discovered anime, is just, like, you know, look, looking for some community online, and that's fine. I'm instead just going to be there for her. <laughs> Don't even get me started on the Bill Gates and Socrates podcast. These guys know that's not Bill Gates and Socrates, right? They know it's one computer talking to itself. No disrespect. Can you imagine how big of a loser you'd have to be to ever watch an AI-generated podcast between Bill Gates and Socrates? It's Because it's not Bill Gates and Socrates. It's a computer talking to itself, man. I don't know how else to explain it. I'm putting it in the simplest terms possible. All the comments are like, this sucks, and then the replies are like, it's going to get better. It doesn't matter how good it gets. I, I, like, I mean, I know that most people here know that, but like, no matter how good it gets, it's never going to be Socrates. Like, you got to do... Like, I'm not saying AI has no purpose. I'm just saying that's the dumbest purpose of all time. It's like inventing like the internal combustion engine and being like, look, it can run a vacuum cleaner badly. You're like, I don't want the fucking fumes in my house. I'll just put it in my car. Put Strap some axles and some wheels on it. Let's go to town. It doesn't have to do everything. It doesn't have to power my damn dishwasher. You ever suspected yourself of having adult ADHD? I mean, I've thought about it, but I think it's like stolen valor. Like when I... This is not fair for me to say, but sometimes when I look up... Um, like the symptoms for like adult ADHD. I'm like, is this not something that everybody would describe themselves as having sometimes? Easily bored when doing boring shit that you don't want to do, but able to have extreme focus towards stuff that you're passionate about. I mean, that just sounds like life to me. Like if you got to fill out a form, if you just signed it, it would take like two minutes, but you're like, <sighs> and then when you get to play League of Legends, you're like, dude, I'm fully invested right now. What content are you proud of? I don't know, man. Like, I'm, I'm too old for this conversation. I'm sorry. Like, I'm just... <laughs> I picture myself more like... There's no ambition behind what I do. There's routine, and I think in that, there's some nobility. You know, not everything needs... Like, I, I am reaching a point for sure where, like, I hear content creators talk so highly about, like, the stuff that they make. And they're like, it's all about trying out new ideas. And then, you know, I want to be on the cutting edge of YouTube content. And then you look at their thumbnail, and the thumbnail is, like, letting chat choose what I put in my ass. And I'm like, it's not that they're wrong. It's just that I guess I'm in a different mindset. I, I consider myself less like I'm making... Um, you know, like once in a lifetime content and more like, I'm like car talk, you know, I'm like an NPR podcast that's been on the, the air for like 40 years. You wouldn't go to the car talk guy and be like, what's your favorite episode of car talk? Oh, it's the one where we taught them how to fix the vapor lock in their Pontiac Sunfire. You're just like, no, it's just a comfortable thing to have on while you're, uh, while you're driving or something like that, you know? That's, I've, I think I've, I've acknowledged my place. You gotta add a Y before an, before an A in your Midwestern words. Okay, like Seattle? <laughs> that can't be right. Yeah, I'll get a Caesar Seattle. Is that, that's it? That's all you needed? 
You don't have to bring anything big. Just like a Caesar salad or something. That's, that's, that's the greatest tip I've ever been given in my whole life. Yeah, Tammy's bringing the meats. You could just bring like a piece de salad. It's approaching perfect Minnesota. <laughs> oh, dude. That's good. That's some good stuff. I mean, take me to southern Belize to destroy some infrastructure. I'm very familiar. I, I mean, the easiest way to destroy infrastructure is probably by using a mech. The second easiest way is just to... Uh, Spend your entire life voting for uh, lower taxes, which undermines your jurisdiction's ability to actually do necessary maintenance and upkeep. And then one day you die in like a bridge collapse or something like that. That's probably the so you don't even have to do much for the second one. Are you wearing vibrating anal beads? I do. I have. I, I hate to admit this. I have a compatriot in the other room that's watching the stream, and then they're giving me. Uh, one buzz Good through job. the vibrating anal right. beads connected via Bluetooth directly to my hosts. anus. Say hello, Claudia. Uh, if it's A, and then two buzzes if it's uh, B, three buzzes it's if it's C, turn. and Good ten buzzes so if they want me to come in it's my pants. For third grade. Every question and I gotta tell you, this shit points. is almost it's out of batteries. I should have my own stream, for real? I mean, don't let this be hater parlance, but what's stopping you? Don't let me stop you. So this is the lowest barrier to entry of all time. My computer is ass. You could become like a psychotically popular PlayStation 4 Fortnite streamer or something. It could happen. My personality's ass. That's harder, but honestly, it hasn't stopped a lot of people from rising to great levels of success in this industry. Lots of shy bladders in the chat. Well, that's what, like, originally I started waiting for stalls because I did have a shy bladder, which is just annoying. Because you're sitting there, you never end up in the, in the piss arms race with another dude with a shy bladder at a urinal. And you're, sitting, you're standing next to him and he's not pissing. And he's standing next to you and you're not pissing. And you're like, fuck it, and he knows I got a shy bladder. And I know that he's got a shy bladder. And we're both just here standing at the urinal holding our damn dicks. Please, please start pissing so that your, the sound of your piss covers the sound of me not pissing. But then I started going to the stall, like, just because there's a lot of freaks out there. No disrespect, but, like, I've been getting recognized more than usual lately. You know it's just a matter of time till I, like, walk into a bathroom. Well, I already had it happen once. I was just lucky that it was a, a normie. When I used to uh, work out at, like, this community center gym, I was getting full-ass naked in the change room because that's the bro code. And then, like, I just put my underwear on and somebody was like, hey, are you Northern Lion? And I was like, yeah. And then he was, it turns out he was a developer on Darkest Dungeon. So we had like, it was a taunting, like mutually assured destruction. I'm not going to tell the internet about his dick and ass. And he's not going to tell the internet about my dick and ass. We both got a lot to lose. But there's going to be an asymmetry there at some point. Somebody's going to be like, I saw NL at the restaurant. He excused himself to go to the bathroom. I'm going to follow him in and take a look at the head of his dick. That's why I wait for the stall. I'm not ashamed of, of what I got going on there, but it also doesn't present itself in the best light, you know, in a urinary situation. I'd at least like to, to know that there's about to be a paparazzi out there so that I could get it, you know, like in the game shape. Also, I got a shy bladder to begin with, so now, like, I, I got a shy bladder and I'm concerned that the person that followed me into the bathroom is like, it's, it's making it even harder to piss, let's just put it that way. I think, here's the thing, it would be insane if I talked to my wife and was like, hey, your parents need to speak English when I'm around, it's disrespectful, that shit is crazy, I would never have the stones to do it, and I have too much of a brain to ask for sure, but then secondarily, if, if Kate's parents were like, he needs to learn Korean, I would be like, fuck that, <laughs> like, why? We're, get, we're getting along just fine. Like, nobody makes demands of other people. 
We go out to dinner, we communicate on the common ground that we can find, and then we get in our separate vehicles and we go back to our own homes. It's, it's completely okay. Yeah, how about we both learn Farsi? Let's compromise. I speak Korean very poorly. My English is fantastic. Your Korean's amazing. I'm sure your English isn't that good. Let's learn Farsi together. That could be a good bonding experience. It is, it's a little King Solomon, but... Let's all learn a third language together so we're suffering equally. I know people that still sleep with their three-year-old in the bed. I, we, we had a, another parent at daycare that, that co-sleeps with her like three-year-old daughter. And I'm, I, don't, I don't think it's weird. It's just like, I'm glad it's not me. <laughs> but I will say, I, you know, it's, it's been a long time. I'm 34. It's been at least 10 years since I've done this. But as a kid, sleeping in the same bed as your parents feels amazing. Like if you got scared watching a movie and then you're like, you know, hey, mom, hey, dad, I'm scared. And you go in there and you sleep with them. Oh, man, it feels so good. It's the, the comfiest because you're more secure than you've ever been before. Or than you've been in a long time. You feel so safe. Meanwhile, your dad is probably like, what the fuck, my fucking back. <laughs> my fucking... <laughs> Why is my nine-year-old kid still sleeping in a room with me? The Revolutionary War, he would have been on the damn front lines, like, packing black powder into George Washington's musket or something like that. Now we, I accidentally rented Starship Troopers from the video store thinking it was age-appropriate, and the mosquito aliens start slicing off... Troopers heads and stuff like that. Now I gotta go to the chiropractor. I think it's, it's the same thing is like if I had to do a Venn diagram of people who loved playing Stardew Valley and people who hated uncut gems because it's like anxiety inducing. I'm sure it's just a very like a two pixel offset circle. Okay, that's true. All right, I brought him back finally. I, I dug myself out of the hole a little bit. I want my games to induce a little bit of anxiety. Why are you talking about this? Because fucking, if I talk about anything else, people are like, oh, he's talking about the Peloton again. He's talking about Costco again. He's talking, oh, we heard this one before. They come up with something insane. You're like, why would you do this and say something that people disagree with? Because I'm not a politics streamer. If I wanted to just get on here and farm money by saying shit that like people in my demographic agree with, I would just, you know, react to insane political headlines all day then people wouldn't be so mad at me. But instead, I gotta say the truth about gaming, and all of a sudden, everybody's like, no, no, we don't like to hear the truth anymore. We don't like to hear the truth. This shit makes me sick. By the way, I also, I don't, I don't know if you saw the tweet. <clears throat> I was laughing to myself um, probably four separate times last night over the Gordon Ramsay disguise picture. I can't, uh, I can't get over it. Can I just, um, let me, let me just open this up for a second. Let me save the image as. We'll save that as gordon.png. Um, I, I guess the, the first question that I would ask about something like this. If I could find it in my computer here. Is, uh, what, what were you thinking? His face is way, way too wide to be a human being. He looks like one of the bodyguards from Big Trouble in Little China when he's about to explode because he got hit with like his own wind power. I was saying it in the Discord last night. I said if I was walking through an airport and I saw this guy, I would rent a car and drive to my destination. I don't care how far away it is. I'm not getting on a plane if there is any chance that this guy is flying it. Your mother-in-law spends all afternoon cooking you uh, a food. You eat it, it tastes bad. She says, do you like it? You say, oh my God, it's so good. Why would you tell the truth in that situation? Some situations you should tell the truth. A lot of situations you should tell the truth. Many situations you should lie. <laughs> That's at least my take on it. If you lie, or if you tell the truth, maybe she'll cook better next time. That's a very naive look, I think. Once once someone hits, like, 25, 
What you see is what you get, man. And not nobody's like. The only thing you're gonna do is turn somebody into a, an enemy instead of a friend. So, I, you know, in this mother in law situation, my mother in law is like 63 years old. If she cooked me something and it didn't taste good, and then I said, like, oh, it tastes horrible, the only thing I'm gonna do is hurt her feelings. It's not like she's gonna be like, thank you for your prompt and honest feedback, Redditor. I'm gonna enroll in a cooking class immediately in order to solve this perceived problem with my life, because I got fucking nothing else going on ever. Um, so I really appreciate the, your... I understand that life... Basically, the pursuit of life is to just constantly be ironing out your flaws at all times and never actually have time to enjoy yourself. So I appreciate you adding another thing onto my already incredibly cramped to-do list. No, you psycho. You just say, wow, this is really good. And you, you move on. Yeah, you, you... Well, you honestly, like, say thank you for making me food. It's such a... It's a a vibe to not be having to cook for myself. Wow, this is really good, but next time, why don't you add more salt? You saw my mother-in-law, born and raised in Korea, moved to Canada when she was uh, in her 40s. She cooks me some Korean food for lunch. And then me, a white guy, lived one year in Korea, takes one bite, and you're gonna, I'm gonna be like, mm, maybe a little more gochugaro next time. You listen to yourself for like two fucking seconds? That's insane. I'm not gonna do that. Mmm, I think you need to add more Melchi next time. You just say that tastes delicious. Thank you so much. Like the further it gets calcified into the into the brain, the more like the lies you tell yourself become true. You just gotta shut up and pop. Like, people have actually tri tricked themselves into thinking that Inception is a bad movie. Everybody watched the movie in theaters and gasped when they didn't show what happened to the spinning top at the end. They said that was a 10 out of 10. Chris Nolan's a genius. Two years later, they watch one video essay. Haven't seen the movie again ever since, but they go, you know what? I trust the video essayist more than I trust the feelings that I had when I actually watched the movie myself. Actually, I've decided that the thoughts that I had when I watched it were wrong. And having not seen it in five years, the thoughts that I have now are right. It's actually mid. My, when I was watching the movie, I thought it was good. But my memory of the movie is mid. So I'm going to say it's mid. What did my ass eat? Oh, okay, listen. I have a new take, okay? So sometimes I'll order some food for pickup, like for takeout. I don't know when we switched from takeout to pickup, but it's, we don't need to get into that. It's a different rant for another day. And after I pay for it, it says something like, share your meal with everybody. And then it has like built in like boilerplate copy. And it's like, um, I just ordered a yummy X at restaurant Y. Mmm. I'll tell you what, I will tweet that. But I'm not tweeting it for free. If you say we'll take a dollar, if you say we'll take 50 cents off the order, I would at least consider it. I might not take it because I don't want you to meet me at the restaurant, but I'd at least consider it. But for free, I'm not, gonna, I'm not just going to go on social media, advertise for free. Are you crazy? Like there is no world in which, like I, I, I'm not saying you can't offer the suggestion, but I think you should also accept that I think it's insane that after I just paid you like $17 for $6 worth of food, you also want me to debase myself and tell people on the internet how stupid I am for doing it. If you want me, I'm, I'm starting to, I'm, and I've been saying this for like a month, it's still a recent take, but I'm also on the, of the opinion, Ooh, that's a big ranking point. If you use the self checkout at the grocery store, they should take like 2% off of your bill. Because I'm saving you, in theory, I'm saving you labor cost. Reality, I'm not, because whenever I scan anything, it says, stop trying to steal criminal. We're sending someone over to just type in their code without even look at any of the shit that you put in the, on the scale. But that's your, that's a logistics problem with the way that you're running your fucking business, okay? That's not my fault. I am a grass toucher, there's no doubt about it. I love touching grass. These days. I also love when the CEO of a company 
says, hey, we took down our website so you can touch grass, even though he tweets 15,000 times a day. I also love when everybody's like, wow, look at the changes he's making on Twitter. He's so smart. Every, look at how much activity on Twitter has gone up. And then like the activity on Twitter is making it unprofitable. And they're like, look at how smart he is. He did something to reduce the activity on Twitter to make the website fucking not as unprofitable. He's, it's, it's just more episodes of No matter what happens, it's always genius, man. Yeah, he he completely ruined it, but it was losing a lot of money. So actually, it was like a 4D chess. It's crazy to me that people who aren't stores care about shoplifting. I mean, if you ask me, like, do I feel like shoplifting is wrong? Uh, unless you're stealing something you need to live, then I do think it's ethically and morally wrong. Or if it's something you really want. <laughs> But it is crazy to me when people are like, oh, someone stole like, a, you know, like a chocolate bar from the drugstore when I was there. Okay, like, you know, like people's stealing like orders of magnitude more than that on a daily basis. I'm not even talking about like wage theft. I'm just saying like people are stealing like cars and stuff like that. I'm not going to worry about someone. A loss prevention officer stopped this person from getting out of Walmart. Look at their cart. Yeah, they got bread, milk, and diapers, but they also got some Doritos in there. Get them. Throw them in prison. Don't throw them in prison. Just make them eat the Walmart apples. People from the Stone Age made flour out of cattails and ferns, mixed it with water, and baked the mixture on a hot rock. <laughs> Dude, cavemen were so stupid. <laughs> Why wouldn't you just use a pan? <laughs> here's, here's some, here's some uh, cattail cooked on a hot ass rock. That shit must have taken like 18 hours. Nothing like watching an NL stream while drunk at work. Okay. It's 2.55 Eastern time. I am thanking the Lord you are not a school bus driver. And I'm moving on. Didn't you say yesterday you, doesn't, you don't use a knife to get mustard because it saves you 10 seconds? No, you got me backwards. I said it's not worth my time when I'm ravenous uh, to grab a knife, put it in the mustard, and put it on the sandwich. When I'm like starving to death, especially knowing I'm going to need to wash the knife the next day. I'm not saying that adds up. I'm, I'm not out here being, trying to sell you like an e-commerce course. Where I'm like, I don't even have time to put mustard on my sandwiches, okay? Because if you take that 10 seconds, that 10 seconds over the course of a week is 70 seconds, which is more than a minute. That's an hour a year. If I use that hour, I can spool up an e-commerce site in 15 minutes. That's four new e-commerce businesses that I set up that you didn't just because you value Dijon mustard. I'm literally just saying, you know, auto some level of automation for, for annoying tasks is good. Don't get me wrong. Like a Roomba is a great example for a lot of people, okay? But also, you're going to be like doing things your whole life. You could take the, the red pill and try to free up as much time as possible so you could play one more game of League of Legends a month and probably not even enjoy yourself. Or for these little like micro tasks, you could just change your perspective and, and learn to enjoy them and value them as much as possible. I don't know what pill that is. I guess that's the, the placebo. I don't find it impolite if my brother-in-law wants to pick up the check at lunch. If I say, I got it, and he says, I insist, I'm like, all right, brother. Insistence deferred. I defer to you. I'm not like, oh, he owned me. He fucking owned me by paying for the bill. Implicitly, he thinks I'm poorer than him and I need to be protected, but I don't need to be protected. I'm a man. I'm the one who does the protecting, even though I'm so fragile that somebody buying something for me hurt my feelings. You know, I'm not like that. I'm like, thank you for paying for a dinner. It was delicious. Good night. I'm just, I don't know. Like, here's the thing. Maybe it would be good if Marvel wasn't so popular. Not because of any of the reasons that you suggest, just because I'm sick of like, oh, you saw Black Panther in the movie theater five years ago, 
how do you enjoy being someone who's killed cinema? And I'm like, how about you shut the fuck up and go to like twitch.tv slash criterion collection. You'll probably be the only person in chat while they play the umbrellas of Chernberg. People will show up for five seconds to be like, oh, this movie's a classic. I love it. Then they'll hit uh, Alt F4 and go watch something that's actually entertaining, like the new season of Stranger Things. Shit's driving me crazy. I'm just, I just watch what I watch. It's not... I, I, I don't know if it's just that I'm free from the idea that I should, you know, not watch movies that I want to watch. Instead, I should watch movies that are good for the industry. I don't care about the industry at all. I don't even care about my own industry. I'm just, I'm just wondering what's for lunch today, brother. Charlie Chaplin. 40. Ah! <laughs> Natalie Wood. 29. Marilyn Monroe. 42. Chadwick Boseman, 44. Paul Newman. Imagine being alive and like getting a time machine and watching me do this quiz and just di dispassionately being like 12, 17, 28. You would probably like come to my house and beat the shit out of me, right? I'm sorry. It's just I'm, I'm in sport. I'm sporkle mode. I'm not saying these are not tragedies. I'm just saying I'm just trying to it's trivia now. When you're alive, you're living, and then when you're dead, you're trivia. It'll happen to me, too. The only thing is, they're not going to put me in a Sporkle quiz because, like, you know, 0.5% of the population even knows who I am. None of this VOD will be usable. It's all going up. 100%. This is, it, honestly, it's been a great stream. You just lack a little imagination. It's been very funny. Viewer retention will be shot. No, I don't think so. Have you seen the bullshit people watch on this website? They'll be back. I know what you get. You get it tomorrow. You get it. I'm so sick of his Midwestern bit. Let me just scroll through Twitch. Hey, someone's playing uh, a new game. Let me uh, check it out for my... Maybe I'll watch this. Oh, so we're not going to push the point? Oh, that's fine. Let me just watch a just chatting streamer. That's a pretty funny TikTok. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'll watch someone. Oh, look, there's uh, someone's playing one of my favorite games. Someone's playing FIFA right now. Sorry, guys, my DoorDash came. Like, that's, that's all there is on this website right now. So, your threats are idle. They fall on deaf ears. I'm thinking. Because we have a triangle. Yeah, because then we can probe twice. And we can just, we can prioritize. It's useless. It's not useless. It's like saying uh, a pen and a paper is useless. Why, not, why would I buy a pen and a paper when instead I could just uh, remember everything? It just is. That's not a, you can't, a, what is that, an appeal to idiocy? It's like a, you just invented a, a new logical fallacy. Your rhetoric is so bad, you're writing new pages in the textbook of logical fallacies. It just is. The hell are you talking about? I have a phone. Yeah, probably for like six months out of the year until you get hammered and accidentally like leave it at the bar. And I, know, I see you, you pull out, you're like, hey, uh, let me, uh, just, sorry, I just need to check something real quick. You pull out your phone, the screen looks like a damn spider web. It's been cracked so many times. Don't even start with me, a guy that I made up in my head. What profession would you do in the early 18th century in Canada? I don't know. I'd probably be like grading the furs or something like that. Like when, when real men hunted the animals and then skinned them and then like put the furs on like a, like a sled that another real man like drove to a, a log cabin. Then they would give them to me and I'd be like, mm, mid, mid, pristine, bussin', mid. Didn't this game come out a while ago? It came out in 2011, it was called Dark Souls. Then it came out again in 2012, it was called Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition.
Then it came out again in 2013. It was called Dark Souls 2. Now that one, we don't talk about that one too much. But then it came out again in like 2018. It was called Dark Souls 3. And we talk about that one a lot because that one is... They, they honestly did a great job with that one yet again. Minus 2, Dark Souls 2 is awesome. Unlike you, I've actually played it. So... I haven't seen the video essay that from H Bomber guy that redeems Dark Souls 2, but I have played through the entire game about six or seven times. I'm here to tell you from personal experience I would disagree with the academic discourse. Why didn't you read the card? It says what it did. Hey, did you learn how to drive a fucking car by reading the book on driving a car? No, that's like heavy 15-year-old energy. I know how to drive because I know what a fucking do not enter sign looks like. I know what a drive how to drive because I know what a sign that says slippery when wet looks like. It's idiocy. You got to take the damn thing out and like pop the clutch a couple of times to understand how to use it, okay? People are like, oh, oh, why, uh, why am I no good at talking to girls? I read a lot of articles online. Because you got to get out there and, uh, you know, you got to bomb a couple of open mics first before you get that kind of confidence, okay? You can't, you can't just uh, spend your whole life in the library and then get behind the wheel of a damn spaceship. My insane take this weekend was how annoying would Twitter have been during the entirety of the Cold War? Holy shit, it would have been miserable, man. Let me be an uh, insolent copycat, by the way. Can you imagine, like, it's like the 80s and you're like, oh, Back to the Future just came out. Wow, such a good movie. Robert Zemeckis. Wow, Michael J. Fox. Wow. Oh, I'll try to get to the theater. If um, Brezhnev doesn't blow up my house with a nuclear ICBM, how can you be tweeting about Back to the Future at a time like this? Red Dawn? Oh, a movie where uh, Russia and America are at war? No thanks. I'll save the 250 I would have spent on a movie ticket and just turn on the news. It would have been, it would have been miserable, man. It would have been horrendous. Imagine how fired Don Draper's Twitter uh, feed would be. Dude, Don, we don't need Don Draper. We have Gary Vaynerchuk. I, 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 I literally turned the planter's peanut into a baby and it made $100 million. What's stopping you from going down to a garage sale and bilking some retiree out of a cup that she's selling for $450 that you can flip on Facebook Marketplace for $12? $12. You got a, you've got a phone in your pocket. Hey, Anel, can you shout out my friend John Favreau? Hey, John, your friend Honest Bloom got in touch with me. Just wanted to have me give you a quick shout out. Says you're a big fan of my content. Says you're, you work in entertainment. I work in entertainment myself. It can be a hard business. You know, it can take a while to achieve some success. Don't let it get you down. Just keep grinding out there. And I'm sure one day you could write and direct a few movies that gross over a billion dollars worldwide, including the Lion King uh, remake, and then also the first Iron Man, and some indie films as well that have done some good work, such as uh, Swingers and, and Chef and The Chef Show, of course, as well. Uh, best of luck to you, and thanks to your friend Honest Bloom for, for getting in touch with me.